Welcome everybody here to your broadcast of the D2CL. I'm Toby One, your host for the English Live stream tonight. I'm hopefully you enjoy our broadcast. We're doing Navi vs. Fnatic, not a game which we were expecting to actually cast this evening. It definitely was meant to happen at this time, but we had a late minute withdrawal from late hour withdrawal, I should say, it wasn't minute, uh, from Cloud9 as they have had some scheduling conflicts. Fnatic will replace them here in the winner's bracket semi-final going up against Navi. Winner of this will play up against Power Rangers, who came out on top of their victory last night up against Team Arena, Tinkerino, and only the top two teams that come from this playoff will advance themselves through far enough to go to Dreamhack Bucharest, where they'll play the land final for the D2CL. I am joined tonight by a man who will offer insight, intelligence, as well as long spiels. It is my co-cast for the broadcast this evening, and it is Claire Voice. Welcome, welcome to the show, man. Good to be here as to always, Toby. I've been actually watching Dota since three hours ago today, and I was fortunate enough to catch up on the Fnatic vs. Navi game that just happened prior to this match at the Summit. Mm -hmm. And boy, after ESL, people have been having their doubts, but Navi, Ten they're looking sharp, remaining. they're looking strong today. Yeah, it was it was one of those things that you saw Navi Five play at ESL, remaining. and you're like, eh, I'm, I'm not really feeling the magic. Like, the, this, the coordination's oh, a little God. bit off, it was good, but it's not Tier 1 right now. Like, did really the last game with Fnatic really change your mind on that one? Um... Or, or was your mind never in that mindset? It's 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 hard to say. I mean, for one, for Fnatic, I feel like uh, with this old MYM roster, the biggest expectation I had coming into this match overall is that they play similar styles of Dota. So I figured it would actually go to go to a length, go to a distance, not just in time, but in terms of like the sheer perseverance between the two teams battling it out and looking for ganks on each other's side of the map the whole time. But it, it ended up Quite abrupt, I would say. Dendi ended up getting a solo kill on the rise I've made with the Shadow Fiend versus Panda matchup. And they've also been kind of sticking to their guns on the side of Navi, picking up the Tree and Protector along with their Skywrath and Batrider, which I guess is kind of generally known now amongst the pro scene anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they, they came out with a quick win. Fnatic. So whether Fnatic changed my mind or not, not too sure. But Navi, they, they play some seriously consistent Dota. And I'm looking forward to actually see if they pick up Bristleback for Havost again. That seems like a very Havost type of hero at this point in time. Yeah, man, it's, it's a hero who you, well, you can Ten run away and not die really. on, so it works very well with the Vost. Uh, one thing I'm not as certain no, about now is going to be, uh, obviously, the changelog came, down, came out very, very recently. Now, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but that's not actually applied into the game client just yet. Uh, I believe it is. but It, it did come? Yeah, because if you hover over the skills, they actually show and reflect the changes. Really? Like Death Prophet's nuke now scales from 75 to 300. And you actually have the 32 seconds on, seconds on the Sonic on the link Razor of Razor. Link, yes. Yeah, because for me, when I first saw that change, I'm just like, okay, okay. His landing presence is really, like, it's the second nerf that Ice Rog has given to Razor. First it was the Plasma Field, and now it's also the Static Link. Fanatics like, this has been, ban. like, done over. And even Skywrath yeah. Mage. Like, Skywrath Mage now takes an extra 0.2 of a second to channel off his, um, his ultimate, like, that's... No, I'd say channel, because he's not channeling, to have the damage inflicted from his ultimate. Ten so that's even, remain. like, you know, you're losing your burst rate coming out from the Sky Wrath Mage, and then you're losing Five your lane presence from the remain. Razor as well. Like, you put these things together, I'm still surprised that both Fnatic and Na'Vi still want to pick him up in the first two. Reserve yeah. Time. I mean, in terms of sheer numbers, it seems like... It seems like quite a heavy burden, because... You normally don't see this kind of nerf patch coming out. Of course, the usually, usually like the the point C patches are when Ice Frog really finalizes nerfs, and rarely do patches actually go to the point D. But um, overall, like the items, as you said, there's three of the four heroes that are picked up so far that pretty much receive nerfs. 
even the eye of the storm which is also on uh somewhat unnoticed because it was a minor tweak but mm. the strike interval kind of got a nerf as well before the agonim scepter and even with the agonims actually it looks like uh it, it did get changes as well because with the agonims at level three it used to hit three times exactly per per second and now it's at 0 0.4 second interval at level three so that got a tweak skywrath the other thing is the ancient seal the spam ability of that fantastic spell an instant silence that comes out from like 900 range at level four that got a nerf as well, which is pretty big, as you said, with the not only the burst potential, but the disabled potential coming out of the silence mm -hmm. is slightly nerfed. Another hero that's not been nerfed, however, is the Sand King. And we saw it at the end of ESL, Vici using that to the top finesse. Man, really, that was FY. That was FY through and through. Like, you could, yeah. I think you could give him any, almost any support hero and he'll still be impressive. Even though day one, Five Vici Gaming weren't as impressive. They managed to still like easily glide their way through, but... They weren't as impressive as they were in day number two. The supports must have had their goody juice uh, going into game num uh, into day number two for ESL one. Uh, but still a good combination from from Navi. So Sand King, Wraith King, very very. I mean Sand King, Wraith King. What am I talking about? Sand King, Sky Wrath Mage, uh, combination together. They work nicely. And then you get like the standard Death Prophet. It seems like a very standard opening being drafted out by Dendi here. And should also flag the fact um, this is happening all the way through Navi ESL one as well. The Dendi has now taken over the drafting from Navi. So, putting uh, FNG on the back burner as far as the captain's seat goes. Yeah, that's a surprise to see for me. As you mentioned that, uh, it's arising the pink slot, but come with me doing the drafting. And I guess that entirely is not too surprising. Although I would imagine Hani's give, definitely giving the, the back one of the ideas. But Coming see, out of ESL, see, he's picked up a lot. That, that was one thing which Hani, um, like, he told me as well. Like, he likes to sit on the back lines. Like, he, remember, we, we had the classic tweet from Hani. When I draft, I mute my team. I... The classic quote, of, the classic quote of Hani. Um, but he actually said, like, he, all he wants to do is focus on being the number one role, being like that core for his team, and then just throw in some advice here and there. But let the team make their own decisions instead of dictating it to him. I think he had enough of the stress of that in uh, in previous teams. So he's just trying to stress stress relief himself, make sure he plays good Dota, and then just give his input where he thinks it could work or may not work for the mm -hmm. team. Yeah, Hani's definitely been suffering in recent times through multiple different aspects. But uh, I guess that's something of his own for to worry about. With this new roster, of course, they are performing, I, I would say, um, again, up to standard. But sometimes it seems like they kind of fall off in the mid-game. I guess that's, again, partly due to the experience. Even though MYM has been around for so long and most of those players are kind of seasoned, mm -hmm. they haven't really been in the Tier 1 circuit. I think you mentioned that the other day, too, for quite some time. Yeah. So going up against Navi, who's who a lot of people are keeping their eyes on and saying that they're not really shining as of late, it, it will be somewhat of an even matchup, I hope, in terms of demonstrating skill. And I, I think it's going to come out today. I think both these teams are definitely very capable. Um, in terms of experience, I've, I've kind of said the same thing. Like They kind of rely a lot on snowballs and ganks as opposed to sitting there and farming. But really, Navi opened my eyes last game. Dendi... In 20 minutes, he had 16, 17k net worth, and the next guy on the enemy team was 8.5k. And granted, that's partly due to the snowball effect and stuff, but took a fast Roshan, you know, was able to maneuver around the map freely and just asserted his dominance all over the place. So it was really nice to see that he's in his shape again. Yeah, uh, man, Dandy is. I, I, I know for, for a lot of fans out there of Dandy, and there are a hell of a lot of them. They've always wanted Denny to be back up into that, like, the tier ones of the solo mids. S4 took a lot of uh, glory out of that middle lane too. I know for a while, the only name that was on everyone's lips was actually Sing Sing with his, with his solo mid for a while. And it's been a while since Dendi has been flagged as the number one mid. Mm -hmm. and he's, he's always been up there. He, he's, the he's always been up there, but he's never been uh, the undisputed mid unless you go back about two years ago. Yeah, and the, and then I guess that's probably due to his attitude, though, right? Like remaining. every time Dendi gets uh, confronted about entering like a one v one championship or whatever, he always says Dota's a team game, and he would like prefer to withdraw, kind of thing. Yeah. So he's very um, hesitant slash passive about it, which is why like people kind of like question it from that start because everybody likes to ask questions from all different angles. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I still think he handles it very well, and as you said, man, he's still a top tier player, S class player, always was, always will be. Yeah. Well, let's look at our draft, man, because it's about to come to an end. So, Fnatic, we've gone with Razor, uh, Jackie, uh, Wraith King, as well as the Mirana, uh, while Na'Vi have the Tidehunter for their offlane, the Sand King, Skywrath Mage support, and then Death Prophet for the mid. So we're missing a divorced hero, and we're also missing um, the, the final hero that will actually dictate the lanes for Fnatic. Like, we've been seeing Jakiro's going cause as offlane solos. Uh, we've been seeing Mirana supports, Wraith King supports, both can also go core. 
with with the lineups that Fnatic have. So there's a lot of options, even to a point where Fnatic could be running aggro tri lane here. Uh, there's they're not really restricted at all, Ten Fnatic, in their drop. Remaining. When Na'Vi just seems to be very stock standard, let's go through the motions kind of thing. Five seconds mm -hmm. remaining. Yeah, just as you said, there's a very open set of options for Fnatic right now. I, I particularly like the Wraith King pick. It's very strong against a lot of potential bursts coming out of Na'Vi. Like, if Ravage, if Tidehunter doesn't have Ten a second Ravage, remaining. or if Wraith King just gets big enough to the point where he wants to tank everything, it would be very fortuitous for Fnatic to just have a round two on their fights, because they have low cooldowns and Wraith King can soak up so much damage. The problem would be the Death Prophet being able to kite the Wraith King, and now another problem arises. The hero's been seeing some play at ESL, and people are starting to discover the potential of the split push coming back again. Mm -hmm. It's the Animage. Yeah, this Black's farm on that Animage was ridiculous at ESL. Uh, I, I kind of want to give props to Cap right now, who, by the way, happy birthday, Ten Don Capitalist. Uh, he's now becoming an older and more mature man. Uh, oh, but he, he was talking to me about uh, the way this patch is moving. And that heroes like Animage, so heroes time. like Spectre are just perfect in the current meta at the moment. Everything's transitioning itself to this this mid to late game kind of carry. And obviously Animage doesn't really fit into the late game carry part. Like he is like the end of the mid game to the early late game because he does yeah. really tail off. Once you hit around that 50 to 55 minute mark, he needs someone else to kick back in. But then you've got Death Prophet and Animage and Tanunda all together. They're going to be 100% fine in this draft. But it, it really is just pushing in saying, okay... Sure, we can get pressured early on, but we seem to be finding more space for these cores to farm up these days. And we have like these three main or four main gang squads that keep making the space. That's what made VG Gaming so powerful. The Animage got so much space because the other four players of VG Gaming roamed around and were basically up in the face of the enemy every single time. Yeah. Honestly, looking at this patch, I, I can't help but wish that Tinker did come back. To be quite frank with you, like with all with all these fights going on, and you know, a lot of people are thinking it's four protect one when it's not exactly the case, but it kind of seems like it because you have this one super farming hero like Animage, and I guess for the side of Fnatic, it's probably going to be Razor or Ursa, but then everybody else is just off on the side, quote unquote, making space, but really what they just want to do is gank and fight. Um, I, I don't know. It's just there's there's a lot of things that killed certain heroes. There's a lot of things that opened up the coast for a lot of heroes. My main spiel, as you would call it, with Tinker is I, I wish he was able to kill the Rock Willems in the jungle at least. Yeah. But, yeah, won't be able to fight for a while at, at his current state. No, well, n not like his old state was, where it was just flash farming across the board and Ancients was his wonderful, wonderful world. Uh, yeah. But we got Fnatic on the Dire side now picking up an Ursa. So we have to flag Roshan as being of critical uh, importance to Fnatic, especially considering you could uh, just get an early point up in the Wraith King's Vampiric Aura. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that will allow Ursa to have a free time inside of Roshan. Not to mention you've got Liquid Fire to also help you out, and the five-second arrow from Mirana. You get a lot of things working the way here of Fnatic. And the level one fight, though, for Na'Vi is still quite decent. As uh, it seems oh. we've actually lost every single player. Um, <laughs> we need a remake because of internet problems. I'm actually happy with this one because for some reason... Um, my, uh, my game decided that it'll, it'll just automatically activate the rainy weather. So, <laughs> this allows me to disconnect myself back out again and get that fixed for, for our next game. So we'll have ourselves a quick remake and get back in again. But is this really going to be like one of those, uh, level 1 Roshan times we're looking at when you see a draft like that? Um, I feel like, uh, both teams can kind of try to scout for it. And I think Fnatic are definitely going to crutch on it because their lineup is not very good at picking off enemy mages, and they're also not good at pushing. They can force the issue in front of enemy towers, but again, if you can't take the objectives fast enough, what's going to happen is the Sand King and Skywrath alone will be able to not only farm faster, but offer more ganking potential together than just the Wraith King and bottom. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I feel like the I feel like the odds are for Navi right now, but. Fnatic will be the one to engage the issues. The yeah. Roshan is critically important for sure, but I don't think they're going to attempt a level 1. Nah. Not after a remake like this anyway. I, I'm, I'm with you too on the, on the whole level 1 Roshan. Th there's no point to take the risk for it. Like, you mm -hmm. know you're just going to slip yourself in around the 6 or 7 minute mark. You're going to keep the attention of Na'Vi as well. And they, like, they don't even really want to give you attention for that. You're running a Sand King. This guy wants to sit inside the jungle and just like farm up with his Sandstorm. That's the goal right there. Uh, we should also flag, too, that we're replacing, uh, Vanscore with NS. Oh, interesting. We have a, a VP stand-in right now, so, uh, I also want to double-check it. I, I suppose it's, it's legit now, because Virtus Pro, like, actually, does NS really play for anyone anymore? 
honestly, dude, I, I don't know. CIS scene is always going to be a mess no matter what because they don't really enforce the whole, uh, I guess, professionalism aspect as hard as most uh, other sides would come to be. So NS is, he, he's a lone, uh, not a lone spirit. He's a free spirit. All right. I don't know if we've actually just gone to captain's mode here. Yeah, we're disconnecting out of here. This this actually flags me that we are looking at a level one uh, level one Roshan because they weren't captain's mode, so they have got the extra time. Oh, that's that's actually a very good point. That might change things. Yeah. It's, oh, no, you it's, know what? I'm, I'm still sticking to the other side of the fence. I think after remakes like this, too many players have like too much time to contemplate on the different options, what they're going to do. May maybe it's, like, it's a bait. Maybe we're going like like double level Inception on this. You load up, <laughs> you, you want the extra time because Captain Smoke gives you that little of extra time as opposed to the all pick. So by doing that, you run yourself into Roshan and then you wait. And then yeah. they have to come and check it. And do you really actually is there anything on Navi that can check from range without risking the positioning of the hero? Without like get coming mm -hmm. in range of everything, which is the only real stone, which is the Hellfire Blast. Like I say real stone because it will fly directly towards him, even though it is still a projectile like an arrow. But you have more chance of hitting a Hellfire Blast than you will an arrow. Like, yeah, is, is there actually anything that you can come in close to the Navi lineup? I don't think they have a range scouter per se, but they've got enough tanky heroes to kind of stand in the front lines. Like Tyrant can probably just walk in, honestly. Sure. I, I doubt they're going to do it, though. I, I don't think so. Like it, it would be like a smoke at the start. And uh, you know what? I, I wouldn't put it past both either team here <laughs> to do a level one smoke right off the bat. <laughs> well, there, there was the, um like, uh, it's, it's faster now to actually do Roshan with the current map, I believe. Uh, with, 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 the, with the TP points. Because I remember there was a video that came out, I think it was like uh, like two weeks ago. And it was like, oh my god, look at the early timing of Roshan. It was the fastest one in history kind of thing. And I'm like, hmm. Uh, you know what, though? The problem is when you do it in a 5v5 setting, this kind of game, like the slam is actually going to kick in as a factor because the slam does more damage now. So unless you have like three range heroes that can stand in the back lines, it's definitely got to get it off. And, and yeah, the Roshan, I'm not sure if it's actually stronger from level one. I believe it's not, but it gets stronger faster. So maybe that'll have an impact. Although I doubt it against the Nurse though. I, I'm just double checking as well to make sure that NS is uh, allowed to play, and it seems now that NS is uh, <laughs> FNG is answering me in in, in the uh, in LL conference chat thing, but presumably NS is actually listed as um, as a permanent. There's in the only the only stand-in for Navi for is there, they're like perma stand-in for this competition. So congratulations Whoa, to NS. Something. He is an honorary sixth member Navi's of uh, of Navi. That's good. Wow, well, well, they're actually going through. Uh... Yeah, but look at the troll bands. Because <laughs> they they don't care about the bands. All they want is the heroes they selected before. So they're not keeping this rather accurate. Yeah, let's let's hope they don't mistakenly ban one of the enemies or their own heroes. Yeah, that would be a bit. Now, then we, then we do this all over again. It's actually nice to see the Slark being banned out. Even though I know it's not a legit ban. Like, that hero. I think some, he's strong. Yeah, he really is. Like, he, I think he's probably one of the most underrated heroes right now. Even though I know he's appearing with a couple of teams here and there. Mm -hmm. like, he does, he's not given the respect as a lot of other, like, snowball carries get. Mirana. That's. I think that's partly the reason why he's in the place. Actually, like, he gets picked in a situation where most of the time you would excel because he has all these. Like, he has the dark pack, which makes him super, super slippery as a fish, and he can just dodge not only projectile spells but just the stuns coming out. He can just remove them off the bat. So, it's it excels in those positions when he gets picked that fourth or fifth pick when people kind of overlook the hero. Uh, it's definitely in an interesting place. He's a very strong hero indeed, and he has his uses. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see it, ma'am. We've got our last picks to come up here, and uh, then we'll see if Fnatic have the balls to go in for a level 1 Roshan. I know when you when you play like a best of 3 like this, you, you know, if you win this best of 3, you play up against Power Rangers, and I'm fairly certain the Fnatic are going to have a lot more confidence going up against Power Rangers than they would, remaining. well, one, going through the lower bracket and facing up against Team Reno, Team Carino, um, mm -hmm. but also like you win that best of 3 between PR and Fnatic, and you could find yourself at the land files in Bucharest. So, playing for the cheese, playing for the troll tr the troll strats, may be the perfect way for Fnatic to approach this game. 
you get that early advantage and you hold that advantage and push your your extra advantage when your timings are right. Yeah. So uh, that's that's the only reason why why I have a feeling the Fnatic could attempt this. But we're inside the game now, so we'll roll ourselves out. Yeah, that's smoke. Uh, smoke straight away. Where's our ring? We've got no ring of Basilius. This is not a level one Roshan. Yeah, he he did pick up the smoke. So, uh, yeah, passing on the wards over yeah. to come with me. L look, look at yeah. the line they're drawing. They're looking for a gank inside the radiant jungle here. That's the that's their goal right now. How how ironic, eh? Like when when Navi first started, this is like how the map looks every single game. Navi versus another team, except Navi is the one that's moving as five. And you know what? The smoke happens too. So no Roche, but they will go for the wraparound because they assume that they placed the trap with the Ursa and the Wraith King pick, which they sort of have. But look at look Kabost, at Vost. He, he's not. He, he's not afraid. He walks in. He plants down the observer ward, but he doesn't check. He came pretty close to him as well. Now the observer ward would go down, so it scouts out a Vorse, and they know they're not going for it. Come with me. Hellfire blast. He can't attack into a Vorse because he'll blink and then just join it. But he gave it a shot anyway, so they both use their abilities. But that yeah, at least that, reveals that the fact that mana burst not leveled up from the start. Yeah, if Avos actually waited for the animation of the Hellfire Blast to come out first, he would have missed the blink and he would have died to a follow-up arrow. So that was really nice that he just blinked as soon as he kind of realized from his screen, probably. So come with me, he's going to block up one of the camps for Vest Case. Just puts the sentry ward inside the tree line, so this uh, little heavy camp is not available. But they don't block anything else up, just the one observer ward watching the, the bottom rune area. And what do we actually get? So Ty gets the bounty, and it's a haste rune on the bottom. Ooh, that's, that's a nice for a ganking duel. Perfect for someone like come with me. Maybe yeah. not always able to get yourself in range. If you can bait out that blink from Hulforst as well, you got a guaranteed Hellfire Blast into an arrow then. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do want to point out something I really like here. Ever since the Kraken Shell and the Anchor Smash changes, the Titanters have been skipping a lot of Stealth Shield in the early game. I really like Fun what Funic is doing here because even though it doesn't stack, the early levels, whether you have that Stealth Shield or not, makes the difference in certain matchups of whether you can get zoned out or not completely. And in this matchup, it's pretty good to have against Hani overall because he does so much physical damage from the start. Mm -hmm. So again, I really enjoyed the pickup here and I would imagine he picks up the boots right after. Let's actually uh, just give ourselves some bearings here because I realize we haven't really gone through our lanes. So up on top lane, there's going to be Hani as the Ursa Warrior going up against the Tide as well as SK lane with Funnick as an FNG playing up those roles. Dendi is the mid solo Death Prophet up against Arise who's taking the solo mid Razor. And S is just babysitting as a Sky Wrath Mage. Looks like he's uh, coming down to, to search for the stacks but they do not exist. Currently not a single point of experience to his name. And a voice, is, a voice is the man getting completely zoned out on the bottom lane. He knows he can't stay close up against Ace's Jakiro because Liquid Fire is going to burn every bit of his life away. And Kamami and Ryze are currently actually being watched by the Observer Ward. So they know where where they are, but it's definitely giving a voice really pause to actually come into this lane. Because he knows if he comes in close, he's just going to get burnt down and potentially control the arrow. Oh, the it arrow. even connects. Perfect. That's a good five second stun. So I used to have a lot of time to attack into him. That's the Ice Path. Very late on the Ice Path. I'm surprised that she didn't level up Dual Breath, but... He tried to give it a crack anyway. But Avorce takes damage and has to use his South. Yeah, so it was a really nice arrow. And they're pulling the Creep Wave away. Even even pulling the Creeps for the enemy. Kind of just to sap the EXP from both things. The Neutral and the Creeps. And pushing the tower in the meantime. Um, I was going to say that it, so far things were favoring Na'Vi, oh, but Come With Me has finally rotated it out and I think this is going to spell better for Fnatic because Na'Vi were winning actually two lanes with the Skywrath present at mid and the Sand King presence at top lane which forced Hani to not play too, too aggressive. Of course it's Tide Hunter so it's not easy to play aggressive against the Tide with a melee hero anyway, but Hani, good awareness here. I'm, I'm even wondering too if, if this even matters in Hani's mind because Hani will still be sitting there going, okay, they're pulling, like my bottom lane is still doing a great, uh, great job. Like, Jakira may not have all the farm in the world, sitting early 6 for 3, but that bottom tier 1 tower is already down to 384 life points. And they know they're going to take Roshan as well. So the early injection of money coming into this lineup of Fnatic is going to be really, really high. Which means getting early blink daggers, getting early mechs, are going to be easily afforded by Fnatic. So I'm, I'm, th yeah. I'm thinking at this time, Na'Vi should be more concerned about this, this uh, early timing coming in from the injection of money from the early objectives of Fnatic, if they can take them, of course. Mm -hmm. Horizon was able to sap out three three instances of the Static Link, and unfortunately for them, they actually missed the arrow coming out of Rise, but it was a pretty close one. But nevertheless, puts a, enough pressure on Dendi to realize that there's somebody camping him a mid, so he can't play too far up. Of course, it's a Razor, you never really want to play too far up anyway, but 
Speaking of playing too far off, this enemy with his with his little mantle cloak cosmetic is actually sitting at very low life points. Hobo style, playing super aggressive. He really looks like a Sith with that kind of like thing. Yeah, he really does. Like it's it's just like pimp my Sith. That's all I'm really <laughs> seeing right now with the Vost. That's a really weird set. Um, FNG's gonna wave for Harney to come in a little bit closer here. Funnick's up to level 4 at the moment. I'm also surprised too that Funnick, uh, decided- I suppose it's not really that surprised going up against Harney, that he got the second point up in Kraken Shell. As opposed to going up for a point up in Gush. Uh, Funnick? Trouble? No, not oh, at all. is he gonna go down? No. Pretty close though. Got a lot of swipes on him. <laughs> so the Ty's just trying to push the limit a little bit more. The power of Anchor Smash is only going to get you so far up against that Ursa. Yeah, but you know what? Honey's actually running out of mana. If you don't have mana in this matchup, chances are eventually you're going to fall off against the Anchor Smash Rasmus. Oh, Arise, trouble, Barrow Strike. This should be first blood with the Crypt Swarm into the Sandstorm. It's enough AoE damage. FNG, too much damage oh. from the tower that he couldn't take it off him. So Razor will get the money for the kill at least, but he will not claim the experience. But I think Denny is still 100% okay with this. They just managed to get a one for one trade off in the mid. Yeah, I think it's convenient for FNG as well, honestly. He hasn't been stacking the jungle, and now that he's able to reset both his mana oh, going as well as his points. Funic Hellfire Blast into the arrow on a Funic. He's still taking a lot of damage here into the Anchor Smash, but there is really not a lot to play around with. And actually, Ursa Warrior, even though they're on the side of Roshan, he's put three points up into the Earth Shock. He's looking for the extra damage control over that Tidehunter. Yeah. With that, of course, Navi aren't exactly aware of it, but this kind of commitment forces him to stay in the lane a little bit longer, just so he can get probably up to like level 8 or 9 before he wants to tackle Roche. Of course, it's not mandatory because he has the Wraith King, but that would require two heroes being off the map, and in the meantime, Arai is getting a little bit harassed up. Yeah, he, he tried to be a little over-aggressive on Denny. Denny doesn't have his boots, so he can't keep up with the Arai. Oh, the smoke. Uh, it's only going to pay off if Denny overstays his welcome here. He's trying to drive the Crete Wave down because he's not sure. And even then, FNG still got his Barrow Strike available. And he sees Kami break on the smoke. The Plaster Field will connect on both of them. But Fnatic just cannot get themselves in range. That's, that's a Death Prophet without boots, but still having 3 2 2 movement speed. LOL. Yep. You said it, man. 3 2 2. <laughs> the the, ma the, the magical number for a Death Prophet with, three, with a 3 0 3 build of Witchcraft. And no boots. But now the boots arrive, so it's up to 379. And this is a lot better for the Death Prophet, because if he had that before, he probably actually probably would have got himself killed. Because the, the way he was walking up this direction, Arise was walking to his teammates Dyer's that were coming in. Yeah. And all, all Denny needed was two hits and one more Crypt Swarm. And he had that kill on the Razor. Same time, he might have actually fallen too if they were able to chain the stuns properly. So it's yeah. ironic how it works, but the lack of the boots in that situation might have helped him or saved him. Um, or or gotten him killed, rather. Avors yeah. finally has this Ring of Health. He, burnt, he actually flew in an extra salve down here in the bottom lane, so he had enough life points to stay close on Ace. But at the same time, I'm also looking at Jakira, who's about to crack level 6, 6 minutes in. So, this is this is still a really good Jakira. All mm -hmm. he's got to do is TP towards the top lane, they take that tier 1 tower. Because are you really looking for a counter push coming out from Na'Vi? Not so much a counter push. I mean, Dendi is up to level seven, and actually, uh, before we get into the talk about the exorcism pushing, I think it's good to note that he's level four Crips Crips Stormer right now, which used to be the level three Crips Stormer and level four Witchcraft at level seven. That was to maximize the efficiency coming out of the passive Witchcraft, but now with the scaling change on the Crips Swarm, he wants that 300 damage as soon as possible. So it's good to note that Patch has already had its implications in this game aside from the draft. But yeah, the counter push potential with the exorcism, it's it's certainly there, but not with the Razor's presence at the mid lane, not with his max plasma field. Got some interesting TPs coming out. Rises TP to the bottom lane. We had come with me actually TP himself in towards the mid. It's because they've smoke moving. Alright, they're they're smoke moving in the Wraith King as well as uh, the Ursa. Yeah. So they can check for that while on bottom lane. Ace is being initiated on. Rises arrow was well off target, but the ice path here from Ace. This will be a collateral kill over on NS. Avorce uses ultimate to try and ensure the kill while Rise, he has a leap available. And Avorst will blink up, he needs two attacks, there's one, there's two. So a double kill for Avorst. And FNG, is he gonna check for the, he's here for the eight minute rune. He might actually have a look in. Yeah, he oh, is, he is, is he has a look in, and he'll scout him out. Roshan's so low too, he can sit here inside the sandstorm because they have no detection. 
So he'll send the illusions in to attack into Harney. You've got Denny making his way into Harney. He's already got the Aegis Sea Mortal in his hands. Barra Strike will go through too. Come with me. He's going to drop no reincarnation to keep him alive. And Harney, there goes your Aegis blown already. But a right. He'll get the link over on Denny. The phase boots. He's using it to run himself away and get him as far away from Harney as possible. Has his own set of phase boots. Support's coming in here from NS. But concussive shot's already been used. The damage stolen by Arise, only 112. The plasma field damage, not oh. enough to kill Dendi. 13 life points, and he gets away, so they burn the Aegis. Harney was still capable of bringing down Roshan, but he won't hold on to that Aegis advantage, and he did lose the Wraith King for it. Yeah, and I think the biggest story is he's, his farm's been hindered because of all the engagements. Even though he's got pretty good CS and one kill as well as Roshan, he still doesn't have his plads because he opted to get the phase boots for the laning. And his farm's not really enhanced because he doesn't have his passive points either. And Earthshock is a fantastic spell, but it's not... Ursa's management, mana management is not good enough to spam it everywhere he goes, so he can't farm that fast anyway. Overall, this game is still pretty in favor of Navi, I would have to say, just by the draft. They, yeah. They're content with sitting in their lanes, and as soon as this enemy gets levels, he doesn't even need the Battle Fury, because there's no real kill potential coming out of Fnatic. That's not obvious against enemies right now, so Navi are in a really good place right now. Yeah, but I'm waiting to see what happens when this money comes in for Fnatic. Like, they're taking the tier 1 tower on the top lane now, and they should just rotate around with these three. Bring down every single tier 1 tower. This will allow them to fall into the Yule Scepter onto the Jakira, which means they have something up against the Anti-Mage. And then you'll also get potentially Blink Dagger onto the Ursa. So that'll give you something else to go up against the Anti-Mage. Should also flag to the fact that Fnatic tried to, uh, was attempted to be ganked up on the top plane, but uh, Fnatic missed the timings on their stuns. They went, the, they actually threw out the uh, the Wraith Fire Blast at the same time as they threw the Ice Path. So Fnatic just TP'd himself straight out. They didn't chain uh. their stuns and, and keep it. So he knew he could just escape himself out with only those two heroes there. So a little bit of miscommunication, which I know probably is a bit of a pain in the ass for me to flag it against Fnatic. But it did cost them a kill over on the Tidehunter, or at least a potential kill. Yeah, that is quite unfortunate. I, I would imagine they would have had an easier tower with, time with that tower even against Dendi if they did have the kill come to pass. But speaking of Fnatic, you know, he's hit level 8 at 10 minutes, which is already really good. And the Ancient stack, there's four stacks, or rather three stacks there that's available for him, and I imagine he's going to go to that next. And yeah. once he finishes that, he's going to have his Blink Dagger for the next engagement, and that's really big. I'll just give him a moment, man, with the T1 tower going down the middle lane. That's the first use of Denny's Exorcism, and they took a tower uncontested. No one from Fnatic wanted to try and even have a crack at them. The Ace did bring down the T1 tower in the bottom lane, so it's all about trade-offs right now. And you're still getting that good farm coming into the Jakiro. He is, however, walking around with a Sage's Mask. So I know I said, like, a quick Yule Scepter into him, but because I'm not seeing the mech over on Arise, I'm wondering if Fnatic are actually considering going no mech in this game. It could just be a casual Sage's Mask, because he has the two Ironwood branches in there, so it's possible he'll still build the mech. But it'll be pretty risky for Fnatic not to go to a mech lineup in this game. Actually, it's uh, it's weird for me to put it this way, but hold that thought. Come with me, he's yeah. about to follow at the top lane. That's gonna that's actually gonna trigger his reincarnation, but Harney puts the blink dagger to work. Oh, the blink. NS does not survive long. Into the phase boots. He's got slow in two seconds time against Dendi. Dendi's got his phase boots off cooldown in one second time, but Harney, blink, two seconds, one second. He'll have to go into the tower for this one. Dendi, oh he jumped inside the tree line! And Harney won't have enough time to attack him. He used the fog of war to escape out of that one. The mid-tier one tower's being brought by down by Ace as well. And Arise starts static link. It's a blink away. While well, FOG got caught in the ice in the ice path. But that's now all tier 1 towers lost. Riot's gonna get sealed up. A Vorst FNG, he can't get himself in range for the stun. And if he did actually go for that, he would have copped an arrow to the face. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice that Fnatic were able to take out all the tier 1 towers thus far. 12 minutes into the game, that's some good surge of gold and I guess pretty decent map control. Now that Honey's shown his blink, it's even more map control because I guess Navi heroes have to generally watch out for that. But Again, like the Sand King had unhindered farm ever since like the three minute mark since he moved around after getting that razor kill. So yeah. he's he has his blink dagger now. Even of course, he's a hundred gold away from his battle fury. Like, yeah, even that too. Like this is all still really, really good for Navi. And if Fnatic lose the next engagement, things are gonna just be in the rough constantly from that point on. So they have to be careful where they next pick their next fight. And I see Arise now, he has the Invis rune and is able to scout out a lot of targets. But overall, they, they need to push the issue with a pickoff. And right now, Navi's positioning doesn't allow for that pickup to come in very easily. Yeah. In fact, Navi's positioning would allow for, for an easy counter gank. Because mm -hmm. with a Blink Dagger over on a Sand King, you can have that epicenter thrown into the middle of the team fight when Fnatic are least expecting it. But Fnatic will just try and five man force the top. They just go for the towers. There isn't a Dire Observer ward up, so they can watch the, the rotations of heroes like, like the Tidehunter. 
The arrow will come oh, in. Oh, the arrow. Just a little bit off target, so they, they would have to dive underneath the tower with no creep wave in order to really make that worth it. But you yeah. notice what Denny is doing instantly. He just goes up towards the top lane. He has Exorcism available. But the Tide Destroyer to creep wave off. The, the Liquid Fire is going to directly attack into the tower anyway. So either they take the full team fight here in the mid, um, or they TP themselves in after Fnatic try and extend themselves to kill off the Tide Hunter on the top. Like, that's the only two scenarios here for Fnatic. And both of them, I don't see them really ending too well for him. Oh man, funny. That was a that was a pretty ballsy play there. He just blinked in towards the Jakiro, assuming that there was nobody that's in proximity to either save him or kill the Tyrant right away. And as I say that, Dendi gets a pick off at mid. Yeah, that was what quick. The heck that was Epicenter being committed for that one too. Yeah, no Skyrath ult he needed for that either. Yeah, pretty fast kill on Honey. I, I'd actually Again. assume too the Skyrath cracked his level six by being there. So he may Oh have... yes, yes, you're right. He, you're right. he probably didn't have it. The top tier two tower is completely toast. The fortification will try and protect it. Ravage from Funic with the Anchor Smash into a follow up hit. He'll bring down Ace. The tier 2 tower actually survived through the Liquid Fire. FNG, there's no mana for a Burrow Strike, so even if he catches up to Rise, he won't be able to keep up with him completely. The Arcane Boost, one second off cooldown for Funic. So he can trigger it, which does give him the Gush available. Harney, blink, and then just jumps in. And maybe Navi feel they're gone a little bit too far up on that lane. The Vorsa gets stunned up, and there's actually a lot of damage. They'll kill him. The arrow follow-up. Yeah. Held him in position. And Denny yeah, wasn't ready was... for this. He just used his ultimate on the top, on the bottom lane, and he hasn't taken Dyer's the tower yet. Tower is under attack. Still fine, though, Dyer's because there's no tier 2 objective at top anymore. The only thing Fnatic can really do now that their mid lane is pushed in and they don't have the force to push it out again is kind of just respawn to bottom lane. And that's that's just really good forcing of map movement coming out of Dendi. Even though he lost two teammates, any mage and Tyrant will just resume farming the top lane and probably their own jungle. Because Fnatic, they just don't have the map control to push the issue any further. And again, Honey, like he's he's been doing a lot of work this game. For his heroes and for his draft, it's, it's an incredible amount of work, no doubt. But they need to apply more pressure. They need to warden the enemy jungle right now. They need to stop this AM from just getting free farm anywhere, everywhere he goes, because this blink movement is not stopping unless Havos makes like a really ballsy dive like he did just now. But for now, I think all Havos wants to do is finish up his treads, which currently he's still another five, uh, 500 gold away from doing so. So he also needs spaces. Denny now looks like he's going to build into a BKB, starting off with a Mithril Hammer instead. A little bit surprising on yeah. that one. You think you just start yeah, with never the see that, Club. Eh? Not on the DP. You never you never see that on DP most of yeah. the time. Like, if, if you had like another hero, like for example a Razor, where you just wanted to just slightly yeah, increase the damage output, attack. like that I can understand, but you don't really think of DP as a right clicker. Yeah, Even and, though, and you, you know look what? At in this game, <laughs> in this game you see the Mithril Hammer is actually the last pickup. Rise actually picked up the recipe before that, thinking that he's, he might possibly die or lose his gold or something. Yeah. Well, Avorst and Dendi are taking out this top tower. They've got support behind them with FNG and NS hanging around. And there's, there's, no, there's no one coming from Fnatic. So this tier 1 tower belongs to them. And we take him by the Anti-Mage. And that'll be his Battle Fury. Bottom lane. There's going to be your eyes path. NS with a concussion shot. Just trying to slow down Ace. The Boris right from FNG will still connect. But FNG needs a Sandstorm and hide away from a rise. The Static Link will still remain here. And is there another Ice Path? One second. And now it's going to bring FNG out of this out of the Sandstorm. He'll Boris right back underneath two, but Harney right in the mark. Blinks him for the clap. So they're able to pick off two heroes in the bottom lane. The SK as well as the Sky Wrath Mage. Well, up on top lane of Forces Solo pushing a tier two tower. So, again, looks like Na'Vi not looking to fight. And Fnatic Radiant's fighting and taking map control through the towers now. But they have to mm. keep this pressure up. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. I think even though they're down on, on the manpower, I think Na'Vi are still looking to take the engagement. Fnatic is nicely positioned to counter gank any sort of real dive. And I think Fnatic are actually realizing that and sensing the urgency of stopping this AM. So, Hardy blinks forward, but is unable to chase the blinking anti-mage. And the push will be subdued for the moment. Roshan's up. He only just spawned. And, oh, uh, you know what? He just TP top two, so it's not a good timing. Uh, Ryan scouted it out, though. With face boots and a blink dagger, it won't take you too long to get down there. But he also doesn't want to no. show, like, just disappear from the top lane when it's so close to his tier two tower. Because if Hani yeah. does that, it's going to flag so heavily to Na'Vi that Fnatic is aware that Roshan is up. Yep. That's a good point. And I think another thing to watch out for is that Na'Vi have this really nice ward placed to the entrance of the Dara jungle. If Hani makes his way right through that, then it's going to become blatantly obvious. Yeah. 
But he won't know about that. And his path, no, he is, wouldn't. His path is still going to lead him down this direction. Well, so, he actually has no mana, so I, I would assume he wants to hit the fountain before he goes. And looks like you're right. In fact, he'll blink away from the ward, go back into base, and then come out again. Yeah, that hero is so, so mana intensive. It's, it's ridiculous. But a very strong hero, though. Good right clicker. You notice through the way he tried to build into it? Because you still need to have some level of mana regeneration, so we went for the Ring of Aquila Radiant instead. Yeah. Like, it's a nice cost-efficient item, but he didn't need the Vlads in this yeah. game. Yeah, with the Wraith King's presence, he definitely doesn't need it. But what that forces him to do is it locks the Wraith King to kind of follow him all the Navi. time. And... I, I, I'm not so sure about this, boys. I thought for a moment uh, they're going to stay I don't in. Know. They actually have the edge here. They have the more blink initiators and they have the bigger AoEs. Again, better fighters overall. So I think Fnatic are the ones that need to be careful. They're close to Roshan, but they're not going in. I think they've also realized who the Navi is here. Like yeah. they, they had the Dire Observe Ward, but Navi was smoked up. So they didn't have perfect vision of it. Hmm. I, I think we also forgot to point out the Come With Me's item build. We end up having coming up on him. Hand He's going for the blade mill next, but yeah, he has a Midas and Treads already. He wants to transition to some sort of a carry waking. I'm I'm still okay with this one. I think Fnatic yeah. realized too, like their late game potential is okay, um, and the fact that Navi want to wait for late game. Yeah. If, if if you really think about it, with a core Wraith King in your lineup, or at least a, a Wraith King which is able to pump out the damage and so have ability that you want from a core Wraith King, that may just give you what you're searching for to fight in like the plus 45 minute games. Which this yeah, game yeah. could easily go towards. Yeah, I think um, they really want this to have a fighting chance, honestly. Um, the main idea is to survive against the Animage until that point. Because if you can't hinder an Animage's farm, what you have to do is you have to hinder his push at the very least. Based. And his push with a mana style is very, very fast. Not only that, but he offers a lot of solo kill potential. So most of the time you need two heroes defending him against them. The problem with Wraith King is even though he's such a fantastic core, he is mana reliant too, in a sense that you can't have it all burned away. And mm -hmm. of course Enemy specializes in burning that mana, so oh, Dendi. even Wraith King can't Come with me. alone. Sends him up in towards the air. This can be Denny's Yule step to doing that. Then a Vorse jumps in the blade mail has already been triggered. And the Moonlight Shadow from Fnatic. They drop the sentry ward in case anyone from Fnatic wants to try and re-engage in. But no one from Fnatic wants a bar of it. In fact, they're bailing out of here. They're gonna let the tier two tower drop on the top. And they're going to get Roshan in trade. It's going to be the only reason <laughs> well, they, they would did move smoke, this way. so they're going for it. But as you said, the tier two tower going down. If Navi realized this, they might be able to push high ground fast enough. Ooh, Dendi. They're committing exorcism to a half HP tier two. I'm pretty sure they want to push in a bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Well, they just scouted out the fact of what's going on because Fnatic started to battle up against Roshan outside the pit. So when he clapped like that, it would have been visible. Now, they're taking a long time, Fnatic here. Denny's ulti is still got like another third duration left on it. And they'll damage it to the tier 3 tower. Ice Path, and as oh, well as Pinesal Field, gets rid of a lot of the life points of the creep wave. But the tower still drops by one third of its life points. And they did manage to pick up Roshan. Not 100% sure if Fnatic will want to say that's a full win. It'll probably very like de like depends so much uh, on how well that Aegis will help him in the next engagement. Yeah. Again, one of the issues with this game is that even though Fnatic want to force an engagement with Aegis, they they don't have too much catch in their lineup. So if Navi just stay on the back foot and play elusive, what's going to happen is that Aegis timer will run out eventually, and they won't make too much use of it. So. In the end, it is somewhat of a trade between the tier 2 Dire and Funic. the Roshan. Fairly calm, Hellfire Blast, Rise. He doesn't have a line for an arrow because the Centaurs came in from the side. And, uh, well, FNG, he, has a he could actually prep the Epicenter at the moment. He Burrow Strikes down, then blinks himself up. There she goes, Scepter. He'll evade the arrow. And Fnatic, they kind of lost track of who they wanted to initiate on. On the middle end, looks like Dendi. Well, the Macro Pie has also gone out here. Is that burning down a Voss? Yes, it was. You check yeah. him out, he's only sitting at, like, 90 life points. Yeah, that, that would have been a huge kill on Hobos. That would have given the momentum for for them to abuse the Aegis and go straight down middle, even though even though Tyrant is still at ulti up, because they realize the death prop ulti is probably down. Would have given them a lot of room to maneuver, even just even if it's just farming the enemy jungle. And again, a slight opportunity lost, but it was a close kill nevertheless, and I personally didn't expect that to happen that way. So for now, Fnatic, they're still keeping it at bay, even though FNG... <laughs> being as much of a nuisance as possible. The Plastal Field's going to do a little bit of chip damage, but not enough to bring him out. And again, we see Fnatic here with no detection. So just a blink into the tree line and then escape away to safety. I'm also wondering what this Doomling is doing just sitting here. While Harney, Fnatic. Okay, that's, uh, someone needs to get Diffuser Blade up against this Tide Hunter. 
So that's, yeah. another, that's another hero. Like, again, Tarnanti using that Ghost Scepter to escape out of the Ursus clutches. While on bottom lane, there's a Yule Scepter from Ace, but in comes a Vort. He dodges the Ice Path. He's still got a Mana Void available. Now Denny using his own Yule Scepter. In for a follow up silence, but the uh, Moonlight Shadow allows Sekiro to escape out of here. How long is it going to yeah. be before both these teams start buying gems? Probably not long. Uh, Hani on the lookout. Of course, he's going to exit the enemy jungle now, realizing that he's too far deep alone. It's one of those situations where if he loses Aegis there, he might have just died again for a second time. In the meantime, FNG is doing the thing at, same thing at top again, and without detection, Fnatic can't really respond. But I have to say, this is really just one of those lineups that even if they did have detection, unless they have two or more heroes, some of these heroes on the side of Na'Vi just won't fall. Like, for these heroes to perish, they need to have abilities to lock them down Aside from just stuns and initiations, yeah. they need to be able to push out the waves as well and anticipate when Navi heroes are coming Ace. from in. They found Dandy, but NS, perfect timing. He got the seal on Ace, so there was no follow up. And then with the Mystic Flare and the orb attack, Ace should die from this one. The orb will connect. While Dandy's triggered the ulti off, and Hani realizes it's not the greatest place he wants to be. The BKB does not protect him from that ultimate of the Death Prophet. Now come with me. The BKB comes off cooldown for Dandy. He used the Fog of War. Into the tree lines, he's still got a Crypt Swarm available, and Hani, he can see him moving over from the side. Hani still got this Aegis the Immortal. If any turn just then, he would have actually killed off Hani, but it would have only taken the Aegis, hence no turn. <laughs> and now Hani's considering a jump on towards the middle lane. Havors, it, the jump comes out from, from uh, Come With Me instead. Havors will be able to blink himself away to safety. They have the Ravage for, uh, for assistance if they need it, but they won't get it. So Fnatic lose two heroes, both the Razor and the Jakira going down. Razor dying inside uh, the river, in fact, near mid lane. And the Jakira on the bottom lane. Yeah, that was really close on Havos again. Um, even though Honey was really low, he was completely okay with the potential death. I think if he had Blink Dagger, he would have definitely gone in for that enemy mage kill. But uh, because he blinked towards the Death Prophet earlier, maybe it didn't come off cooldown right away, or maybe he used it to jump closer to mid lane right after anyway. So again, Havos lives by the skin of his teeth one more time. <laughs> it's the best way to live, man. It's good to see come with me with a hand of mine just getting himself an initiating item. I know you were talking about it before with Fnatic that you require just a little bit more jumping control, like someone that can always be on the front lines, and that's what the Wraith King offers. Yeah, so, so nice to have that Blink Dagger. This, this Wraith King build that people do with the Blink Dagger, Blade Mill, and Maelstrom next item, it's actually really, really strong. I've, I've tried to personally deal against it with BKBs, and it honestly doesn't work because he just comes back for round two. And Blade Mill's cooldown is so short that it allows to be cast multiple times in fights, depending on the situation. And of course, Maelstrom procs are Maelstrom procs. It's game winning, or even without the procs itself, it's still a decent item. So, And you're able to pull off that much DPS from just a support role because he, he got spaced after picking up the Midas. Yeah. So was one thing which this Na'Vi lineup, even with the SK as well as, uh, as, well as the Skywrath Mage, the ganking really hasn't been there. Yeah. Again, though, like it's it's mainly because they don't really need to. Like what FNG has been doing for the last couple of minutes before this this moment of stalemate is he's just been pushing out the top lane, giving so much vision to the side of Navi that fanatic heroes for them to really respond adequately. All they can do is just come to the lane and try to push him out of there, and they really can't, right? With the four staff and the blink dagger and Boral strike allowing him to move that 600, 700 range, it's really difficult to catch this hero. FNG Arise, putting his ultimate. Uh, yeah, he, he had it uh, to farm up the Ancients. The Ancients, I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. But uh, he was he was looking around to the bottom lane, but FNG put down an Observer as well as Sentry Ward. And FNG, there's your oh, epicenter with the Crystal Swarm and Silence. Arise, there'll be a Yule Center from A to keep Dendi out of here. He'll trigger the BKB so he can... Look? <laughs> chase? Something? I think yeah, he was, that, I think he was, was more worried RBG about the uh, follow up coming out from everybody else. FNG, they Blade Mel, Hani Claps. They can't do anything to this Sand King. This is, this is ridiculous. He's got Burrow Strike, Four Staff, and Blink Dagger. So he, oh, Ace. Oh man. Ace has his own Blink, well. and he didn't get the, the Ice path. path in the right target though. Just using the Sandstorm Envis to get away to safety. While Denny's Exorcism, try and bring down this Tier Two tower. It's got Fortification available. Arise will actually TP himself in, but it's already too late. Denny TP'd himself out, and a Vorse is pushing out the top lane. He's getting close to a heart as well after picking, finishing up that Manta. FNG finally gets caught. <laughs> Getting too brave. The yeah, Ace actually made the a edge. mistake there, I think. Because he went up the hill and instead of uh, waiting to Yule Scepter the target and Ice Path follow up, he tried to Ice Path up the hill first when he. Well, he had vision from the ward, but. Oh, it, it's it a trap. You know. It's a trap, honey. Not a trap triggered the way I thought it was going to be triggered. <laughs> it could have been a Blink Ravage, I, I feel. Yeah. Or even with the four staff there. Yeah, yeah, th but... That's what I was looking for. I was looking for them to actually pounce on him before he got near the tier 3 tower to bounce him in this area here. 
Because you could have just had to blink in from one way, movement in from the other. And then it's just Nanny Major just turns himself around. So all three of them could have converged on the point. Okay. That was... That was a good potential, and again, I, I do feel also that it should have happened, but it's it's okay to not do it. It's just one of those things that if the opportunity doesn't get seized on that moment, the next one will come, and potentially it might be of, of a bigger impact or even better. So, funny looking to have those multiple man ravages while the enemy still free farms without without hindrance, so everything is a-okay. I also like uh, Havos' item choice. I think throughout ESL 2, we've been seeing the rise of Animage and, and the different items that the hero can really go. We've seen BKBs, we've seen Abyssals, and of course Abyssal is kind of a critical item for him, but like as a third item, people would build Butterflies over the heart. I still feel that this hero's ability to just burn mana in the team fights with his mana style illusions, it, you really want to abuse it with the Heart of Tarras. Yeah. Oh, honey, there's a mana style now being triggered off of Vorst. Took a Sunder properly here, no BKB to protect him. And the Yule set up, Funny. Oh, oh, he got out! again. He blinks down Ew. the arrow, Rise try and chase him. The Starfall is too far out of range of Vorst. The secondary blink is available. He's into the trees, the silence over on Rise. He's trying to escape, but the Crypt Swarm basic attack from Denny will get the kill. And the other heroes from Fnatic already bailed themselves out. And that is now for the third time for Vorst lives by the skin of his teeth. Yeah. And look this at the heart regeneration kicking. He's ready to fight again straight away. Yeah. That item, it's the perfect enemy mage item, honestly. Illusion heroes that just benefit so much from that 1100 life point boost as well as that <laughs> passive region. It's what is fantastic. this ward? Well, oh, they this? need to break some trees here. <laughs> it's just a really unusual position. There, there you go. Is. They broke the trees. There you go. They just broke it with a four staff. Yep. I want to I wanna see the vi Okay, the four staff again to break another set of trees. Make the ward work. Not the environment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whether it's good or bad, I, I won't judge, but they made it work in the end. That that ward is never going to get countered, by the way. <laughs> you can watch the replay all you want, you'll never counter that ward. That vision of the ward? Okay, it stretches up to here. Uh, yeah. That's, whoa, whoa, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, come on. Uh, yeah, there we go, thank you. <laughs> it's pretty it decent. Got, it got stuck. My, my, my scribbly tool got stuck. Look at that, FNG is a brilliant master. Look, look at that, he, they try to drop a sentry on the on the common hill there, beside the tier 2. That's not going to counter that. I do like FNG's uh, movements. I don't know, SK is, is quickly becoming my new favorite support hero next to Rubik to watch being played. Just because like the timing, ever since they changed the way the invis works in the sandstorm, like that extra delay time to like jump in, jump out, See, it's like the juke ability of this hero is just yeah. so high. And then you get something like a four staff and a blink dagger on this hero. Like the range of initiation. I remember that was always like the old thing of a Sand King, which you're always like, man, Sand King is like one of the greatest heroes. Because for example, here in the middle lane, you got a Sand King here, you blink yourself to here, you can force yourself to here, and then you got a Burrow Strike to get yourself to here. So you've got yourself a range initiation that basically travels from this area to this area. And all happens within the space of like half a second. I bet you're really good at draw my thing, by the way. Well, Have what? you ever played that? Oh, you, you, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you mean like that thing you play you online should, you where it's try. like, yeah, it's like this, sure this is the word. The so score. it's like, what, what, what is this? Like this? Hang on, I'm gonna draw it in the pit. What is this? That's uh, that's a house, but come on. Boom! Yeah, it's that. a house, baby. Easy. Yeah. But uh, Roshan's man, being that, done that with the tier 3 towers being taken out in the top lane. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Funny FNG's being initiated on by Ace. And FNG will still die right now after the Shakira's tick out. Hani's back inside the pit. Denny will trigger the BKB out here. And Hani, he's gonna go down right now to that ultimate. You've still got Havos causing troubles up on the top lane. While Denny, come with me, he's actually gonna die. He doesn't want to. He, Denny does not want to kill him off right now. The slow will hurt him too much. He blinks himself away. He's gonna die the orb. Denny's attack and the orb will kill him off here, right? There's a silence available, so he cannot leap into voice. Actually, still on cooldown. The urn charge from NS was trying to ensure it. Up on top of Voss, he's taking tier 3 tower. He's taking range ranks, and he's trying to take Takiro out. While on bottom lane, Kalmi's still on the run. We've got more orbs flying. No mana left here for NS. And the blade mail will be protecting Kalmi a little bit, but now you'll step the up. Have they got another attack? Crypt Swarm, one second. They'll miss up the hill. The Crypt Swarm held onto by Denny. He started to step that one to actually get the attack off, so he hit the target correctly. But that's going to be Roshan, not down. The, the top Rax has been ravaged by a solo AM, while Na'Vi kept their attention Dyer's elsewhere. Top barracks are under attack. Yeah. And ironically, the only thing that actually hasn't been used is the Ravage itself. A really nice initiation by Fnatic, but that arrow just landing right behind the Roshan itself, Dyer's right onto Funnick, and he couldn't rub it off with the Cracked Shell because it was not enough damage alone. Although, 
Uh, interestingly enough, I feel like Arrow might be able to rub off Kraken Shell alone. Because, oh, how interesting. Because it's level 3, it wasn't enough damage, but... Yeah, because entirely because it's level 3. If he leveled that up to level 4, Funic would have just removed the stun right away. Next level? Yeah, next level. Maybe he actually took that into account, I don't know. Uh, that's brilliant. That's backdoor regeneration there, man. Dandy gonna Yule Scepter up right now, and there's Ravage! Bounces Ace the second he hits the ground, and arrives into the BKB that will not protect him from the physical DPS that's coming out from Na'Vi. There'll be a buyback TP in from the Razor, and a force. look at him! They bounce ready to go, Dandy the Epicenter coming in from FNG, Harney. That was really late on that uh, on that Epicenter. Something like two pulses. But Funic up towards the high ground, gets the gush over, Kalmi jumps in, I'm gonna get an easy pick off. The Mana Void, not enough to kill off Harney. He's got 86 life points, but FNG, did he even see him then? He borrowed strike through and got the kill over on the Ursa. Ghost it protects Funic for a moment, he'll anchor smash, he's got gush available as well, but he'll die to the Razor's, Razor's attack. As a forced, well, Razor will turn out the mid tower, but he keeps just farming up the creep where finally he'll retreat himself away to safety. Yeah. And now back up. Again, with all these heroes dying on the side of Na'Vi, even though Fnatic got the better end of the exchange, at this point, there's just certain heroes like Razor, no matter how much farm they have, they actually can't do anything to an enemy mage. Razor is a team fight specialist who, who can push towers entirely because of his Aghanim Scepter and possibly Refresher. That just does too much damage over time in a situation and enemy is just one of those heroes that chooses the fights whenever he wants to and he can just dodge them as he pleases as well so so long as he just keeps pushing in the lanes heroes like razor and ursa they just get directly hard countered so mm -hmm. this game it really does boil down a lot to the draft and it forced fanatic to have absolute perfect execution but not only that it also required navi to make a ton of mistakes for them to really grasp the game completely and as it stands with tier twos even remaining at this point i don't think they have too much of a chance against this enemy mage any further it's going to take a like a long a long trail of work here for Fnatic to get back on top. Uh, yeah. while, while we have ourselves a moment while the teams are uh, out farming it up, uh, get yourself over onto your, so onto your social networks. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, VK, whatever else you use, be it uh, Carrier Pigeon, whatever. Get your, get your, get it out there and let everyone know we're currently live with Na'Vi vs Fnatic. This is game number one of the best of three. Winner's Bracket semi-final. The winner of this will play up against Power Rangers. And the winner of that best of three will travel to DreamHack Bucharest in two weeks' time to play in the D2CL LAN Finals. So definitely let, let everyone know as now. Looks like they didn't wait that long. Na'Vi's already attacking, and look where Ravorst went to. The second they breach the mid, he goes for the top melee racks. And Fnatic, either they ever notice this, or they just know they cannot contest it. But their mid tier 3 tower's going down. Harney the BKB form. Now Ravorst, there's multiple versions of him. Harney loses half his life points really quickly. But that ultimate from Arise doing some heavy lifting over on Danny, but he drops low, triggers the cheat so he can come back into the engagement. Come with me, there's your Ravage. Fnatic, they got one foot in the grave. One of them actually being picked back out of that grave, which is the Wraith King reincarnation. Send him up into towards the air, there's been an anchor smash into the Crypt Swarm, into the silence, fire strike follow up, they want this Wraith King gone. Harney jumps back in again, he got a bash over on a Vorse, they forced off a Vorse back down again. He has the Aegis in also, even if he dies right now, this doesn't stop the Na'Vi push. In fact, I don't think Anthony can really stop the Na'Vi push, even Ryze being sold up, and there it is, Harney will realise it too. They call the GG out here, disconnection is out rather early, of course that forces the automatic pause, but uh, game number one, it's going to go the way here of Na'Vi. Solid performance in, in game number one. Solid draft and really just... Like, they, they they just didn't take any major risks in this game. Yeah. They didn't play like... Um, I mean, it's weird to say it this way, but they didn't feel like... It didn't feel like they played traditional Na'Vi style, where they were just constantly aggressive around. Even Hobo was just now in that fight. Uh, he was playing objective gaming, just hitting the Raxes and buildings while the rest of his teammates were diving. So it goes to show that this team, they have come a long way from, from their recent series of, I guess you could say, losses from tournaments. And I, I think I think they're willing to switch up their style. I know recently Dendi had this interview about the, the recent patch, and I think there was a lot of criticism directed towards him because of his thoughts and feelings. And even during the ESL match, I do recall him tweeting out something about how uh, farming is... It, it should not be better than getting kills and ganks and stuff like that, which is traditionally what Navi likes to run, yeah. gank and killing. But overall, they're adapting, and that's good to see. Well, let's see how they go on to game number two, see if that adaption has worked perfectly. As uh, Navi are one game away from being in the winner's bracket final, and then they'll face up against an old adversary of theirs, Power Rangers. They do not have a good history with Power Rangers. So stay tuned, and we'll be back for more action here for the D2CL European Playoffs.